Hello, welcome or welcome back to another video. This week, I tried Arch's cold press paper for the first time, compared it to hot press paper in a study of the same photo, and made observations about which I prefer. Let's get started. The supplies I used include Arch's hot press watercolor paper, Arch's cold press watercolor paper, Faber Castell's 12 set of polychromos color pencils, Daniel Smith's watercolor essential set, Pebio Studio Gouache in permanent white, Dr. P.H. Martin's pen white ink, sable hair brushes in sizes 6 and 11, and a plastic mixing palette. All supplies are listed in the description below. Normally, I start by transferring the sketch, but I decided to do swatch tests since this was the first time I used Arch's cold press paper. I swatched a strip of each type of paper to see if I could tell any initial differences between them. Apologies for mixing up the order on the cold press swatch, but I hope you can still see how they compare. The most notable difference to me is how even non-granulating colors dried on the cold press paper. Colors like Thalo Blue and Quinn Rose didn't pick up or pool on the cold press paper like they did on the hot press. Swatches are a good resource, but I knew the real test would be the studies. Like the last time I did a paper comparison, I used the same supplies and paint mixtures to eliminate as many variables as possible. My polychromos transferred easily on the hot press paper. This makes sense, since this paper is much smoother than the cold press. You can see where the pencil caught or skipped in the crevices when I drew on the cold press paper. I painted the hot press study first, since there wasn't room on my desk for both, but I followed similar steps for both studies, even if I painted individual parts of the study in different orders. I'll show the footage for the hot press first, then the cold press later, and finish up with some side-by-side -side shots of the final studies. I started with the background laying down a wash of ultramarine blue for the sky, and a mixture of different greens for the field of grass behind the figure. Since this step was done wet on wet, everything blended easily and created a soft, out-of-focus effect I saw in the original reference. From there, I rendered the dress using a mixture of cool grays. While I liked the overall shadow shape on this version, I wish I started with lighter values. Painting the shadows dark here meant I had to deepen the values everywhere else to make the dress still look light in comparison. The figure's base colors came after that. I started with the hair, then moved on to the facial features. When everything was fully dry, I blocked in the base values for the skin. You can see me immediately start to struggle with back runs and texture along her nose, forehead, and chest. The shadow pass helped smooth some of these inconsistencies, but not all of them. The rest of the process will be familiar to regular viewers. I tend to work with many thin, light layers over areas to gradually build form. While I'm glad the hot press paper is sturdy enough to withstand repeated wetting, I've noticed and been frustrated by textural issues in most of my studies. I've always blamed my technique, but I will admit I was curious to see if the cold press version would go any better. I brought the hot press version up to a level of finish I would normally expect before I went into the trimedia phase, then set it aside and started the cold press version. Like the hot press study, I started with the background. One of the differences I noticed immediately was how easy it was to get a smooth wash. Like in the swatches, the ultramarine laid down beautifully. Instead of rendering the dress, I blocked in the local colors of her facial features first to give the background time to fully dry. The dress came after that with a lighter base value after learning from the hot press study. The next change was the skin. I felt the hot press study skin came out muddy and inconsistent between the face and the chest.
To counteract the coolness of the browns I mixed, I added a base layer of warm peach on her arm and warm gold everywhere else. Since watercolor is transparent, this base was visible even under subsequent layers and helped unify the colors. The face's shadows were easy to lay down and even to blend out before they dried. Of course, this didn't stop user error, like on her forehead, but I was able to course correct and layer more pigment on top before everything had dried. I think the biggest difference I saw was time. With hot press, I always feel like I have to rush to try to get things done before hard edges can form. Things still dry quickly with cold press, but I have an extra half minute to two minutes of working time compared to hot press. That might not sound like a lot of time, but it was crucial for areas like her cheek, where I wanted to maintain a smooth transition between light and dark. This dry time didn't affect small areas with individual details, like the hair scarf, but it did make a difference with large base layers like her hair. However, I can't attribute all the differences to only the paper. I learned from my mistakes in the first study and applied those lessons to the second one on cold press paper. This led to differences like the defined highlights on her chest and things like the warm base layer and lighter dress shadows I mentioned before. If I was only interested in capturing differences between cold and hot press watercolor paper, I would have used exactly the same steps in both studies, but I also wanted to improve my own technique. I try to learn and grow from each study even if they happen to be back-to-back -back of the same reference. Anyway, that disclaimer aside, the rest of the process was similar to the hot press version, just a little easier and more even. The one thing I do regret is covering up her highlights on her face. These highlights help define the structure of that side of her face, and I wish I had kept them instead of glazing over them. I tried to put these back later with gouache and white ink, but that led to other issues. The ink dried with a shiny consistency that stood out from the rest of the face. While the gouache was more matte, it didn't bring back the luminosity I saw elsewhere. That makes sense. Gouache is opaque, so obviously the paper's white can't penetrate it. Even with that issue, I still ended up liking this study enough to finish it. I spent another hour or two rendering out areas like her hair before slowing down for the final details. Normally, this is when I use dry media because I have more control with pencils, but I decided to try doing everything with watercolor and gouache this time. It worked a couple of weeks ago, and I wasn't keen on struggling to place pencil on top of a more textured surface. As I go through these details, I want to emphasize the differences between materials and skill. While paper will affect how your art looks, especially in a medium like watercolor, the foundation to your art will always be your knowledge and how much practice you've put into your craft. I started these studies back in December. I was using different paint and paper back then, but I firmly believe the biggest difference between that first study and this one comes from what I've learned about water control, color mixing, and pigments since then. This is all to say that even though this is a video comparing two types of paper, in the end, the best paper is the paper you have right now. What matters most is your time and effort. Here are the studies side by side. I definitely prefer the cold press version, but that's not exactly a fair comparison since I spent more time on it. I think the real question is, which one would I prefer using for watercolor? For me, I like how I have more time before the paint dries and that it's easier to lay down even layers on the cold press. If I only plan to use watercolor, cold press is the winner, but if I have to do mixed media, hot press would win with color pencil and dry media. 
For now, I'll be using the cold press because it's what I have, but I think both options are great for studies like the ones I do. Anyway, thanks for sticking to the end, and as always, I hope you create something that brings you joy this week. I'll see you next week with another video. Bye!